What's up, traders? It is I, Matt, your host with Conservative Trades, and uh, what a what an awesome day today. I mean, you know, not so much for the market. The market's getting uh, crushed right now. As a matter of fact, I had uh, marked out these levels here uh, this morning on the S&P 500, and we had had this basically yesterday. And you know, this market really could have gone one or two ways today. It really could have gone one or two ways. But um, what I what I saw happening this morning uh, in pre-market hours is you know, pretty much the same thing that was happening yesterday. It just kept coming up, rejecting, coming up, rejecting, and coming up. And I just, I said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and take a position on the T-VIX. Now, for those of you who don't know anything about the T-VIX, the T-VIX is basically, it's basically, it basically does the opposite. I'm sorry, I'm just going to give the, without getting into a whole lesson on the T-VIX and, and how it works, you know, and the SPY and just all the details with it. The long and short is that the T-VIX basically does the opposite of what, uh, the spy is doing, you know, it basically is is the measurement of fear in the spy, so to speak. And so um, I, I, I took a long position on the TVIX this morning in pre-market in anticipation of it actually breaking up through some highs. And you can see where I first got in here. I got in with my first 50 shares here. And uh, because I was again, I was looking at this on the S&P 500 and I was just like, you know what? This would have to break up through uh, these levels here. I'd have to see a considerable, a considerable break, even maybe at 326. I mean, I was willing to hold it, um, that 50 shares, pretty much up to that point. But then it started breaking and cracking through VWAP, and it couldn't hold VWAP. So I averaged in another 50 shares. So I had a total of 100 shares at this point, right? And um, I went ahead and took first first uh, profit here, and then it came down, and I averaged back in because the SPY was still dumping. It was dumping hard, and it was breaking through some really key levels here. This is the daily chart, and I had these levels mapped out right here, as you can see, these two different le levels. Um, I have a dotted extended line and then a solid red extended line. The solid red extended line was kind of I, – I, I pretty much – I'll have dotted red lines to say, hey, this is this is super important area, you know, if it breaks. And then I'll have a solid red line to say, but, you know, if it cracks this, then like we're we're definitely we're in for a ride. And so I stay I was able to stay pretty confident because of it breaking through these levels. I was able to stay pretty confident, of course, having VWAP rejections and EMA rejections along the way. I was able to stay pretty confident to stay into these TVIX trades pretty long. And I didn't hold them all the way to the top here. I went ahead and got in on a drawback here. And I'm glad that I did because this this could have ended up resulting in coming back down. This was a pretty huge sell off here on the TVIX. Now, mind you, when I trade the TVIX, I don't watch the TVIX. I watch the SPY. I watch the S&P 500. Okay. And so, um, but you know all that to say i had made i had made over $500 and i only did this on 100 shares basically 50 i added 50 and then here i might have added another i don't know 25 50 i i can't, I can't remember how much i added there but actually we'll let's we'll see um bought 50 uh where was it again bought another 50 sold 50 bought 50 okay so 150 shares guys and i made a 516 dollar move on the TFIX today. So um, very, very happy about that trade. Again, the market's getting crushed, but you know, the market's do, do for a, a pullback in my opinion. I've, I've been expecting the market to pull back uh, to the 300 levels uh, for a while. It just, it needs to let out some steam. It really does. It needs to let out some air. Everybody gets all upset when the market corrects and they're like, oh no, the market's crashing. No, look, this is healthy. This is why we call it a healthy correction. Now, yes, there's a lot going on with the coronavirus there's a lot of fears in the economy right now with um, the coronavirus spreading to other countries and you know manufacturing being you know shut down in various places around the world I mean that's that's definitely playing into it um, and you know but here here's the thing I mean and, and even with the 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 election cycle coming up you know it, there, there's a lot of things playing into this um, and could this be could we be on our way to a super huge market crash yeah we could be but right now I'm not worried about it I'm not worried about it. And uh, for, for day traders, you know, we capitalize on the, uh, the ebbs and flows of the market anyway. You look at this. This is how stocks move. They move up, they move down, they move up, they move down, they move up, they move down, they move up, they move down. We capitalize on, you know, day traders, so to speak. Look, we're not investors. We're not swing traders. We're day traders. We capitalize on intraday volatility in the stock market. Okay, so it doesn't matter if the market's going up and it doesn't matter if it's going down. Okay, we get in on it. Now, I am a short bias trader, which is why I did uh, well here on MNK. MNK had gapped up this morning on what I consider to be fairly, fairly light volume, and it had an incredibly high short short float interest. So it, it, we were dealing with a 53% short float interest. It's an eight, um, excuse me, 80 million uh, share float. So 
you know, in my opinion, this was going to come down. So I went ahead and took a position again in pre-market. Um, I averaged in up here, but then when it looked like it was about to break through the top here, um, I got, I got out some of my shares here or, and I might've, no, yeah, I think I did just take off some of them here. Uh, and then, um, I, I averaged in back again here and I drew this trend line and I figured, man, this, you know, this is breaking VWAP, whatever, this is going to come down, but it ended up popping back up and I, I got back out. No, excuse me. I'm, I'm telling you this story wrong. Excuse me. Let's go on the one minute chart. I sometimes forget how these things move because I'm not. So I got in here, I averaged in here and I got out there. It came down and then it came up and I, and I got out again for fear that it was going to break high of day. But when it came down here and started cracking through this trend line, I went short and I put a stop up here above this. That was my plan. And it ended up coming over, cracking through the trend line and closing below the trend line. And then it just started flushing after that. We had this big pop up. So I got a little nervous. I took off some of my shares there. Um, and then it and then it came down and then during this time I was in on the T VIX and so I was doing so well on the T VIX that it actually helped me kind of mentally prepare for this pullback and, and helped me to hold through this pullback. I actually really should have added into this pullback after it rejected VWAP, but I didn't. And it ended up coming all the way down, all the way down. I, fi I finally took off my last bit of shares here, here, and then here. And so um, made what 194, basically almost 200 bucks on on that sh on that position. Um, and I think the final share size, so I, sh uh, da, 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 I think that was off of 425 shares. So again, guys, look, we're ending the day up $711.50. And look, shares traded, 1,900 shares traded. My commissions are like eight bucks because I added liquidity. Okay, so this is a great day. I'm basically ending the day after fees and commissions up roughly around seven $700. Okay, so uh, this, this has been a great day, guys. We're still uh, kind of digging our way out of that hole that we <laughs> created on SPCE last week. Got absolutely crushed on SPCE. You should go back and check out that video. And uh, also, for those of you who haven't uh, been paying attention, I actually, uh, or those of you who are new to the channel, I should say, I actually had released a video. I put out a video this past weekend, an episode of what I call the trader's mind. And it, it's, uh, the, the title of it was account building psychology 101. So you, I'll, I'll let that video kind of flash up here on the screen and you'll, you'll see it, um, as the video is about to end out here, but, uh, click on that, check it out. Um, I think a lot of you guys might take some interest in that. I also go uh, into a, a little more in depth about what it means to actually trade, uh, with a, with a, a modest account size and having real realistic expectations when approaching the market and how you can use a conservative trading strategy, not even using, you know, barely, barely half of the buying power that is provided to you by these brokers and still being able to come out making five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars a day, day trading. Okay. I pretty much on average, that's, that's about what I do. I'll, I'll have some three and four or $500 days here and there. And then I'll have some seven, 800. Sometimes I'll have thousand dollar days, you know? Um, but, um, I, I don't take massive share size to get that. Okay. And you don't have to either. And so, um, check out that video if you get a chance and, um, and yeah, you know what? Some days, some days I lose money. Some days I have pretty big losses, just like the one last week. Now that uh, admittedly that loss last week was just that that's the biggest loss I've suffered in a very, very, very long time. That was just an anomaly. You guys have heard me talk about that so many times at this point, you're probably getting sick of hearing about it, but listen, um, the, the vast majority of times, if I'm going to take a loss on the day, it's, it's usually not more than a few hundred bucks. Um, and, and the market does that sometimes. Sometimes you, you just, you just, uh, all you can do is come in and trade your strategy. And if the market is moving against you, um, sometimes it's best to just cut your losses and get out. Okay. And so that's what we all have to continuously remind ourselves to do. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you here tomorrow. Take care.